It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Baltimore Ravens and the Los Angeles Chargers, and it comes your way next. Night beginning to fall over Southern California, but the lights are shining bright here at the spectacular SoFi Stadium in Metropolitan Los Angeles. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the L.A. Chargers. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gordon with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. Just about ready. Cameron Dicker has the honors, and we are underway here at SoFi. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now at his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that. Talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So that as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football. All right, you're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. Uh, didn't get it by much, but bottom line got the first down. Avoiding that three and out, how vital is that on the first drive? To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it, kind of establish something early, and hope it can carry through. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Give all that credit defensively to Khalil Mack. A great stop in the backfield. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. This throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. That wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I have to imagine many defensive coordinators had a sleepless night try to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? But you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against a speed guy on the perimeter. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground and how tough that is for a defense. 
But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Edwards now on first and ten. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Again, it's Edwards. And he'll be close to a first down at the Chargers 43-yard line. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it. But don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. On third down, here's Edwards. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, oh, he's a nice luxury to have, isn't he? And they run with Edwards off the option. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. From the 37, they work on second and six. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. Job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this run. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive is going pretty well. I could come right back at them. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. Fourth down, here's Jackson. And it's incomplete. They could not convert, and they turn it over. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it. This time doesn't work out. Now this defense holds firm here on the opening drive of the night. So the Charger offense making its way out, and at the controls is the league's second leading passer a year ago. At 25 years of age, out of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. The Chargers just continue to improve and take steps forward under the quiet leadership of Herbert, who's been the most productive quarterback in league history through his first three seasons. Over 4,700 yards last year, he's expecting to crack the 5,000-yard mark in this season. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Here's Herbert. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Back to the air, Herbert on second down. He's got room at the 30. Down to the 10. And all the way in for a Charger touchdown. Jalen Gaten, 65 yards. And the Chargers will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track smarts? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that makes the score 7-0. 
The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And he returns this to the 22. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Dance into his left. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And picked up by the Chargers. And they have the football, and will take over at the 24-yard line. And we know he's got the speed to get downfield, Charles, but there's the negative side, a little loose with the football that time. And that's normal, especially when you have his type of talents, because you feel like you're into the open field, and maybe you don't feel the people who are around you are closing in. All quarterbacks have to do extra ball security drills with the way the game's played now because defenses, they attack the football as much as they attack the runner. Now Herbert following the turnover. Complete to Johnston here. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. Now their versatile running back. Here's Austin Eckler. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Austin Eckler, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense can miss too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time, he had the speed to win that race. Extra point up and good by Dicker, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. After the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. Finds his man over the middle, it's likely. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. 
from the 46. Here's second down and eight. They run once more with Edwards. And some pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. But anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Here's Jackson. A slant round caught by Bateman. Well, that'll get them the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Now Jackson on second down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. Jackson now. He's got his target. That's complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. From the two now, second and goal. Edwards trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This Charger defense continuing to hold the line. Now it's a third and goal situation. his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards punching it in from a yard away. And the Ravens have cut it back within a score. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was polished off by the Gus Edwards touchdown run.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From his end zone, here's Darius Davis. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three, because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. He's got Allen, and they're able to get this one across the 35. 17 yards for the Chargers there as they've got themselves a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. And now the throw here is incomplete, and with that, we come to the end of the first quarter of play. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Charger football to start quarter number two as they've got it with a second and ten. Justin Herbert looking to pass. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 42. A good pick up there, 22. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner round all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. To the air again, Herbert. His throw incomplete. Offense is moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Here's second and ten. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Back to throw here, Herbert. Forced out to his left. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. Oh, boy, kind of hold your breath here because Justin Herbert, he appears to be in some discomfort after that last play. More from L.A. in a moment. Would have been a decently long field goal, 51 yards from here, but instead they're going to go for it. They'll run for it with Eckler. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Give him credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. That was fourth and what we would call long in that situation, wasn't it? That wasn't fourth and inches, was it? No, I mean, you get in those situations, fourth and three, fourth and four, that's that's a lot to, what, what would you say, a lot of pizza left in that box. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> Not everyone dove in on that one. In today's NFL, this is a passing down, all right? This is not a running down. That takes a lot of guts to call that play and even better execution. A gain of three, second down. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. 
actually a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. And Allen's going to have a Chargers first down as he gets this down to the 13-yard line. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Stick back to pass. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. The sack there by Roquan Smith. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Now stick. Back of the end zone. Can he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Stick looking to throw. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Sacked there by Jadevian Clowney. So not only do you not get the first down, but you've also made things a lot more difficult on your field goal kicker. Yeah, they're still in range, but you're exactly right because you know the kicker's over there saying, thanks a lot, you just made my job a little tougher because when he kicks it now, he'll kick it lower because he's got to get more distance. That means there's more jeopardy for the ball to get tipped or blocked. Cameron Dicker on now to try the field goal. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It'll be a 51-yard attempt. And that's off the right upright, and it bounces away no good. And this will remain a one-touchdown game. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific out. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely, 59 yards. And the Ravens are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Tucker with the extra point, and we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. L.A. readies for its next possession. And that 14-0 lead to begin the ball game, well, that's gone now. Time to regroup. I think even up two touchdowns, they knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park. And I think that's why we would see the head coach going up and down the sidelines telling his team, let's stay with it, let's keep going. It's almost like he knew they were going to make their run at him. And they have. As you said, let's see if they can regroup and get going again. Stick looking to throw on first and 10. 
And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. Running on first down, Eckler to about the 35, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 35, here's second down and seven. On the option, here's Eckler. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Stick looks to throw. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Now fourth down, so the Chargers trot out J.K. Scott. of 38 yards officially and the Ravens they'll take over now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field well partner you know coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown sometimes that's not really true but last drive that was the case one play to get into the end zone and now they'll try to duplicate that success here and it's rare for those moments to happen incredible when they do and you saw the celebration pure unbridled joy after that one Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Complete to Likely. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now it's Jackson. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. Now a second and ten. Jackson, options out left. And good pursuit yet again by the Chargers as they stuff him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete, and he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 43. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Tui Tui Peroto got in and dropped it. Well, they've been fighting and scratching and clawing for that first sack in the game, and it turns out to be a big one. Not just a short one right there behind the line. First one they get, 10 plus yards on the guy who has the legs to escape most of these. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. A give for Edwards, running right. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. 
in order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle, the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 25-yard line. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Now Jackson on first down. That's caught. It's Flowers. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they can be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Throwing is Jackson. This will be caught at about the five. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. One of the tight ends comes in motion. On second down, it's Edwards. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? A credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Stonewalled on second down. Now let's see what they can do on third and goal from the two. Play action. It's Jackson. And that'll be taken in by Andrews for a Ravens touchdown. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Ravens have taken the lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Tucker now to add the point after. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's Mark Andrews who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And Davis content just to bring this out to the 25-yard line. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. out throwing here to start the drive on oh, the throw led him too much that time it's incomplete to this point I've been impressed with the work defensively they have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free and there's another example another incompletion so the incompletion and now it's second and ten again from the 25 yard line they'll set up a throw flush to his right and he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. 
partner, there's a downside to everything, and the danger of man coverage is if you're locking down your target, you often turn your back to the quarterback, and you don't see him. Sometimes you open up a big lane for him to hit you for big yardage, and that was an astute play by him to scramble out, see that lane, and burn them for a first down. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Michael Pierce, in all of his 340-pound glory, gets the sack. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. 22 yards there, a first down. And now at this point in the first half, You've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. First and ten, stick. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. On second down, it's Stick. And he's got this down to the 35. Now the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Stick on first and 10. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Second down and four. They'll look to throw here. Throw left side complete. That's Johnston. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 12-yard line. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. A shotgun throw for Stick. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This is a 26-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And that'll bring him back within four. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report.
Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Jadavian Clowney able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. They'll throw on second down his stick. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and it passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. But they went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Second and ten. Up the middle with Eckler. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. On third down, it's Stick. Under pressure, and down he goes. The corner blitz pays off there as they sack him for a loss of five. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. 35 yards that time on the punt. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They're rocking and rolling, but the scoreboard doesn't show a big difference. You know, maybe it's one of those games where coaches say you can't miss your turn on offense. I like the way you phrased it, especially with that. I love that rocking and rolling because the explosions on offense are happening. So that's going to keep the crowd going. They're loving that. But defensively, they just can't get it together to get the stops they've needed in order to help increase their margin. They've got to find a way, but you're not counting on it. Exactly what you said. Can't miss your turn. Can't miss your opportunity. Yeah, they're going for another opportunity now. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. 
Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop, and it just never materialized, and down he went behind the line of scrimmage. Jackson now. A swing pass here to Edwards. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards the pick up there. Good for a Raven first. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. On second down, here's Jackson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Edwards. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 43. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? And they run the option here on first and 10. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. And the tackle for loss goes to Eric Kendricks. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. On third down, here's Hill. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. This was the old NFL record distance for decades, a 63-yard attempt. And that is no good. And this will stay a four-point game. Well, it might be the best kicker the game's ever seen. And we've seen him hit from 66, which is the all-time record. But anything 60-plus, that's a very low percentage kick. Don't tell him. He doesn't believe it. But this one winds up no good. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Well, this offense got to be loving this. After the long miss field goal, they'll take over on the other side of the 50. First and 10. Off play action, it's stick. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down, so he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. From the 45 on second down, Stick throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. That's a first down with a cherry on top, 31 yards. 
When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Stick from the gun. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, LA. Gerald Everett, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Chargers have retaken a third-quarter lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Dicker down, attack on the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. That is caught with Sean Bateman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. He'll find Bateman once more. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 42-yard line. Jackson going to keep it running right. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up the third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert, but right now looking at a third and three. to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Parker, that's another short run there, and I think the easy thing is to look at him right now and say, let's get away from him entirely. Let's start throwing the football, but I don't think you ever entirely abandon the run. It helps set a tone for the game for you, keeps your offensive linemen feeling good about themselves, and it actually tamps down a defense's pressure because if you just throw it all the time, it's going to tee off with the pass rush. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Gus Edwards, his second touchdown of the night. And the Ravens have answered back with a third quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. Well, I guess when you look back on it, it was just a matter of time until he popped a big one like that. And, you know, at halftime, you and I discussed it. They had done a nice job on him in the first half. 
but there were a couple of occasions where it felt like he might wiggle out of traffic and take it to the house. Finally here in the second half, that got done. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And Davis content just to bring this out to the 25-yard line. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. Ooh, the juke. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 44 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Stick looking to throw on first and ten. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Rocky Sin. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Well, that offense trying to erase that deficit, get a little bit closer here and climb back into this game in the third quarter. Instead, they further their disadvantage, Charles, with a pick six. And that defense came out willing to do anything necessary to defend that lead. I think they looked around the huddle and said, who's going to make the big play? Who's it going to be? And the person just ended up in the end zone with the football. He was the one that answered the bell. Tucker now for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Taken at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Charger defensive unit making their way back out there. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. They bring a man off the corner that time, and he gets home for a loss of six. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational, CD. That is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators, and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. They'll wind up getting 
10 back as that sets him up for third down. I don't think anyone thought we'd see a run facing second and that long, and that element of surprise, I think, helped make that play so successful. Nice effort on that carry, and it took what seemed like second and impossible. Now has him within throwing range of a first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down in a 21-yard gain. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time, but nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. They'll try the right side with Eckler. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and seven. Back now at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground honed in on it and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. The Chargers on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Now stick. And that will be incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Throws left side, complete to Keenan Allen. And now this is going to depend on the spot. And they say he's just short. The fourth down play doesn't work for the Chargers. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now really hoping for a turnover. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. A short one there, caught by Likely. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. And Brandon, this is the time of the game when Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead, this is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. Oh, the motion comes too late. Now, this is going to be a delay. Delay of game. Offense. And they'll accept that penalty. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. They go with Edwards left side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. 
91 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Jackson's throw pulled in by Aguilar. That one, a first down pickup of eight. To throw is Jackson. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now second and three. Jackson from the shotgun. Finds his man over the middle, it's likely. That'll put him over 150 yards receiving now. Quite a ball game and a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. That's into the hands of Flowers over the middle. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And motion left goes a tight end. Oh, and they sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Game. And that flag accepted. Still second down. Doesn't look to be any confusion here as they come up now on a second and six following the delay of game. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell him to back off of being aggressive. But sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose. And just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. Ball start. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. The situation changes a bit now. First and goal from back at the 10. Now Jackson. That's complete. Left side to Bateman. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. What's the deal, y'all? Well, sometimes when you try to defend OBJ, you're going to get a P.I. call. He might get a P.I. call at just about any point during his route. And I think a lot of teams have taken the, the whole philosophy of, hey, just go ahead and do what you have to do and hope eventually they'll quit calling it. But not in this case. They dropped the flag for the pass interference. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Again, it's Hill. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Justice Hill taking it in from four yards out. And the Ravens have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. You're in the fourth quarter trying to get to the finish line. And here, they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now.
go now. Let's go. Anytime that ball comes to me, I'm trying to take it to the back. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Play action. It's Herbert. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. 25 yards that time. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here's Herbert. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it's second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Here's Herbert now on second down. A quick throw there is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. To the air again, Herbert. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. Fourth down for Herbert. Desperation time. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The fourth down play doesn't work for the Chargers. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? All right, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. Now a first down carry, it's Hill. And down to the 41. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. 109 yards on the ground so far for Edwards. It's a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. 
Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and eight. A little short one there, caught by Likely. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Finds a tight end in the middle of the field. Just a simple stick route. Decent game. Doesn't get you a whole lot, but it's pretty reliable, isn't it? And tough to defend. The Ravens on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. Here it's third and three. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they get five there on third and two. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Edwards now on first and 10. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. So from the 17, here's second and seven. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. He was brought down at the 13 yard line. A gain of four. And it's third down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Here's Jackson. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Lamar Jackson, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens are able to stretch out their lead. Now this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one, and in this portion of the field where things Justin shrink Parker a little bit because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate, you should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep it back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And Davis content just to bring this out to the 25-yard line. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is in the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward into their next contest. Yeah, and with how lopsided this game has been, even one score, might not do a lot of cosmetic good on the scoreboard, partner, because it's just about looking forward at this point. Get a touchdown here. Give yourself some positive momentum and reps to focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. He's by himself, Keenan Allen. Now inside the 25, Keenan Allen. Touchdown. Keenan Allen, 75 yards. And the Chargers get a bit closer. I don't think you can get any more efficient or tidy, whatever word you want to use in that. And one play, 75 yards, end zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent words. How about explosive? 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play, big time result.
So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And they run with Edwards off the option. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because... As the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit, and that's what he did on that play. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Oh, the motion comes too late. And this is going to be a delay. Delay of game, offense. Oh, and a delay of game there. They could not get the playoff in time. Frustrating for the head coach. Frustrating for the offense. Sometimes you have to get the play call in a little bit quicker. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Off the option, here's Edwards. And they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night, everybody.